Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Casey Wilson. I'm Danielle Schneider. Guys, this is Bitch Sesh, the bonus sesh. <laughs> bonus sesh. The yeah, B-sesh. The B-sesh, bonus sesh. Um, and in this episode, we talk a lot about boots on the ground in general, so we sort of wanted to dedicate a, a, an episode to some great boots on the ground that we have received over the last few months. There's some good ones. And we had people, you know, just write them in. So let's just read a few, Danielle. Yeah, what please do you think? Do. Okay. A woman named Bianca Crudo mm-hmm. says, this is short but sweet. I'm on a celeb dating app and ran across a certain guy's profile. I couldn't take a screenshot because I could get kicked off. But does this mean Adam and Carol are on the rocks? Ooh, Yikes. we've been hearing rumblings from that. So it feels like, yeah, the answer probably is yes. Wow. Good for him. Good for her. Wow, 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 wow. Um, this is one from a guy named, uh, sorry, a woman named Jen McClure. Bo- boots on the ground spotted Tinsley and Scott in the VIP backstage area at Lollapalooza. They are still together. She was hanging with Juliet Angus from Ladies of London and her hot husband. Tins looked adorable. Juliet looked crazy in a bathing suit with a sheer floor length overlay and flower crown. Hello, 2016. Love the show. This is from Jen McClure. Wow. I didn't know that Lollapalooza still happened. Neither did I. I never like got into Lollapalooza. No, but it felt like it ended 10 years ago. So good to know that some people are still living their best Lollapalooza life. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Here's one uh, from a friend who her and her friend went to on a pilgrimage to the OC. They We booked an appointment with Dr. Moon. The new patient intake form asked who referred us. Of course, we both wrote Shannon Bedore. My friend and I had slightly different examinations. He had my friend stand up and she got the full Vicky anal exam. Then it was my turn. My exam included a breast exam, including a happy day's reach around to unsnap my bra. And at the end of the exam, he told me, now you will never get breast cancer. Then we each had acupuncture. We both have had back problems. And that's what we told him we wanted to focus on. My friend had surgery several months ago for disrupture. The next morning, we both woke up feeling perfect. Pain that both of us have dealt with for years was gone. Maybe it was placebo. Maybe it was the anal probe breast massage we had received. Whatever it was, nearly a month out, we both still feel great. Wow. She asked that her name not be used, so I'm not going to give it. Here is one from someone that addresses themselves as tiny bones. She says, hi, guys. I see Christy Kidd, dermatologist. Mm -hmm. I know Casey does, too. She says, woo. Today I was leaving and in the elevator, Caroline Stanberry was in the elevator with me. She is so small and gorgeous, but I always feel like people hate her and that and that she bothered the fans. So instead of asking for a photo or being a normal human, I took a creepy, terrible paparazzi shots of her after our ride together. (laughs) Here's one. This person attached a photo, but I don't have that. Well, but um, of my best friends with Vicky. Um, this photo was taken at a piano bar in Madison, Wisconsin, as Vicky was having a girls' weekend at a cabin there. It was right after it went public. Then she and Brooks had broken up, and her girlfriends requested the piano play the song "Gold Digger" by Kanye West for her. Wow, interesting. This person says, I love your show. I've got some B on the G's for you. I was meeting with this guy I met from Grindr, and he told me he had hooked up with Luann before. I was like, no way. Are you lying? Aren't you gay? And he's like, I was sexually confused at the time. Anyway, the story is as follows. Luann was at a party in Philadelphia and snatched slash stole the necklace she wore in season seven reunion from a local Philly jeweler. Jeweler. Luann kept telling everyone at the party that her son... Noel is gay and saying, bet you didn't know that as if she were bragging about it. Also heard from another friend that Victoria is a lesbian. He went back to her room near the Liberty Bell and they fooled around, but then he got kicked out of her room. Ha ha. That's all I have right now. Wow. Wow. (laughs) No tagging. No, no tagging everybody. Um, so this is about someone about Kim D. They saw Kim D. So I walked in the, the, the neighborhood stores. Oh, okay. Back in 2010, I traveled to New Jersey for a lot. I cut to, I drive past posh. Um, I walk in and I notice that Kim D was all alone, literally sitting at the store by herself, reading in us weekly. I played it cool. Looked through some racks of clothes, average price, $400 for a sundress. What the fuck? Finally, we had a combo. Kim D. Hey, honey, can I help you? Me? No, just looking. Kim D. Oh, okay. Well, I probably look familiar because I'm a real housewife. Me. Oh, I watch Real Housewives of New Jersey, but I don't recognize you. Clearly she's best. Well, 
I got to go in the back and piss. Close the door behind you when you leave so no one robs me. I never saw her again. (laughs) Honestly, that's my favorite boots on the ground ever. Thank you. That's from Catherine in Roanoke. Mm -hmm. Jesse writes us, guys, I've got some great boots on the ground. My girl is Erica Jane. She clearly needs to work through a few things as evidenced by this season, but she really is living her best life. I've got some really lovely information. Always nice to Uh hear. From an acquaintance who used to work for Tom Girardi. All I can say is we would be lucky to know him, work with him, marry him, be his child, be his pet, whatever. From what I heard, Tom treats his people incredibly. When he helped win the Aaron Brockovich case, my understanding is he rented out an entire cruise ship for his entire company to celebrate at his, his, his expense. For another event, he sent everyone to Hong Kong put them up in gorgeous lodging, wind and dine them for days. And let's just say I have it on good authority that that was not Erica's first time on a junk boat. Who knew it was a thing? Wow. I expect no, nothing less. I love this boot on the ground. It's not often that we get a, a, a positive positive boot on yeah, the ground. Yeah, so uh, when we do, we appreciate it. Guys, when we say boots on the ground, sometimes we just want to hear some good news. That's nice. Here's a, another one from a, a listener. Um, she says, I went to Abbey Kinney today to discover a new store on the block, much to my s- surprise, called Asa. And I found it was Asa herself from Shaws of Sunset working retail in the store. After talking for five minutes, she goes, do you know me? And I was like, yes. Then she says, oh, so you saw on the last show um, how I worked hard on this, and it means so much to me. She pretty much forced me to try on not one, but two caftans and took personal interest in me even when I was like, I'm not really a caftan kind of person. All right. Mm. There you go. Hasa, you know, I'm worried about her. I've been watching Shaz, which we haven't really discussed no, in the show, had. but she's opened up this huge space in LA that it's a really, really great space in Venice. And I'm like, wow, are these caftans making this much money? Like it's literally on Abbott Kinney. That's and an expensive street. I know. And her whole family's working for her now for the caftan business, her mom, her brother, and her dad. And, she and she's expecting with... Um, Jermaine Jackson. (laughs) Jermaine Jackson. I'm just like, I hope this caftan business pays off. Especially because they were at Nordstrom's and that's a perfectly great place to have them be seen. You don't think they need brick and mortar? No. I feel like (laughs) online Nordstrom business is the best business. Yep. Wow. Guys, these are great boots on the ground. So on some of our live shows, we had some amazing boots on the ground. So we just want to... Have, a lot of you guys couldn't go to the live shows and we didn't air a lot of the live shows. We just wanted to have you guys hear some of the boots on the ground that we found out at the live shows. And we're hoping these are better than some that we have aired, I will say, have not been our best. You know, sometimes we decide to air, air a show and people just want to get off their chest that maybe they say saw Kelly Ben Simone running or, you know. Though I would die if I saw Kelly I Ben Simone too. running. I would That's the thing. I, a lot. Most people's boots on the ground involve Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah. But these... If I saw Kelly and someone running, I would like to join her. And then hopefully a whole group of women would join her like Rocky when he's running to the top of like, mm-hmm. you know, that place in Philadelphia. And that music is playing like working hard now. That's how I want it to be with me and Kelly Simone and a bunch of people following. But everybody else, listen to these boots on the ground. Here they are. Hello. I'm not going to say my name. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. Is everything um, okay? <laughs> everything's okay. I am, I have a mutual friend with Joe Giudice. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you had any friends. I know. It's, well, it's kind of more... Are you in the mob? (laughs) I will not mention that either. (laughs) So I hung out with him on probably 10 to 15 separate occasions. Intimate. Yes. Yes. One one being a boat crawl, we call it. A boat Um, crawl? In a lake in New Jersey, yes, where it was about six of us on a boat. Well, by the end of the night, he had a definitely paid friend join him. (gasps) Wild Teresa was in jail. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Hi. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Good. My name's Alyssa. I live in... Hi. I live in Philadelphia now, but I'm from New York, so it'll tie in. I happen to be friends with people that would be in production for The Real Housewives of New York. And they were doing the, Blessed. the first episode of Sonia doing that burlesque or burlesque thing. Oh, yeah, ca- cabrolesque. The cabrolesque, you. however you want to say it. Oh, no, um, I didn't say it. She did. Right. And uh, first of all, I don't think we realized, and I didn't realize, maybe you guys all know, they have cue cards for her. What? It's like, like the, you know? You guys, what? You guys know you're a writer, you're on TV. It's like, you read the cue. They had the cue cards. I'm but watching. But then why ever wasn't she reading them? Right. 
Why did she seem to be making it up as it went? I'm not kidding. These cue cards were as big as, like, as tall as I am and my height, the what? width. And Her, she was. She truly like she, could not put one word together. It literally was, I'm just a girl yes. in the world. And she was like, so, that's why it was so slow. It was like, and I've got sass. And then you would, like, think she'll come she up with some right. She'd be like, and... And, and the PA holding it was like this. Like, wow, like, thank you for that. Wow. I appreciate so you. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Good news all around. Hi, come on up. Hi there. Um, it's about Tom. Oh. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, Go ahead. So I know Tom's cousin, who was at the wedding. Um, and I know why the wedding was not on TV. Why? What? She says she knows why the wedding was not on, on TV. TV. So um, Tom, well, may not have a ton of money. His family does. Um, and his family is actually from this area, so no tagging. Um, but uh, Tom, really? Tom Sr. said, no matter what Bravo gives you, I will give that as a gift and pay for the wedding if you do not allow Bravo to film. I have pictures of the wedding that were not on people as well later. Touch it up. What did you say? She said she has pictures of the wedding that are not online. Get over here. Wow, wow. Touch it up. That was wonderful. Thank you for that. Because it was such a question mark. Wasn't it just burning and eating away at you? Because we were You know what? The universe wanted us to have this closure. Thank you. Thank you. I can finally sleep. Tonight I will rest my head and dream of nothing but statement necklaces. Hi, come on up. Hi, okay, so this past fall, my friends and I met Sonia and she gave us all this gossip and I put it on the old bitch sash Facebook group, which rest in RIP. Peace, RIP. And our post actually made it onto an episode in the oh. beginning of New York in which Dorinda is reading Something that Sonia told bloggers. Yes, I wondered bloggers, about this. By bloggers, she means me and my friends <gasps> in the Bitch Sesh Facebook group. Wow! wow. Guys, we I made love it this on one. TV. Yes, we Thank made it you. On TV. We're, we're infiltrating in a nice way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank You're so you. sweet. So lovely. Hi. Hi, Colby from Philly. Hi, Hi. Colby. Hi. Oh, hello. I have a background in drama, so I know real audience. I'll give you 10 seconds. Sonia Morgan apparently in the past was gunning really hard with Bravo to sell a Vanderpump Rules for her interns. That makes sense. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Get out of here with that. That is just just so upsetting. Uh, Hi. Hi. I love you both so much. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So I went on a bachelorette trip to Charleston back in April. You just talk a little closer. Sure. Um, And it was one of the most epic trips that I've ever been on. So we're at a bar, 12 girls on a bachelorette. And Mr. Thomas Raveno walks into the bar. Thomas Raveno. Mr. Thomas. Um, Thomas and one of his younger, much younger friends of the age of 22. Um, And so my one friend is talking to him at the bar and the four of us are sort of chatting. He is sweating profusely. As I am. Um, He is needing to like take off his suit coat. He is reaching across the bar to get napkins, to dab his head. It is pretty disgusting. So at this point, he's like, okay, Drugs I need will to do that to you. Yeah, I need to get out of here. Do you ladies want to come back to my mansion? He said mansion? His mansion, yes. He said, and, come back to my mansion? Yes, he did. Uh, he's like, don't worry, the kids are in the outhouse. And they were, and they were. Uh, so I turned to the bachelorette, who at this point, like, did not want to go out, was very laid back. And I'm like, hey, Thomas just invited us back. She's like, where's the house and when are we leaving? Uh, so the 12 of us get in an Uber back to his mansion, uh, to the main house, because, of course, the children are asleep in the guest house with the nanny. Um, and we have this lavish party at his house. We get the full tour. Um, it is And was everything. he the only man? He and his friends. Friend, okay. um, who I think may or may not have been his drug dealer, but that was okay. Um, but it was a very young friend, um, and it was just the two of them and then 12 ladies. Um, so we spent 
many of hours there. Uh, Doing the what, tour. can I ask? Doing a lot of drinking. Um, <laughs> he told my friend that she looked like a young Jackie Kennedy and that he was looking for someone that was smart and intelligent. I feel like he's used that line a thousand Probably. times. Probably. Um, God bless your friend. And she said he was whispering sweet nothings in his ear in her ear, which we were like, what were those sweet nothings? And she said literally nothing because he was making no sense. Um, Oh, Lord. Thank you for this. Thank you. Odyssey and Journey, thank you. Wow. They get around. Wow. Coming up. Hi there. Okay, this is Slightly horrifying, my friend made me come down. Hi. Like, yeah, let's wave. Okay. Um, I have a story Can you about- just come right up to that mic? You can tip it up if you want. <laughs> not, not a mill, don't know. You're perfect. Oh, either do I. Okay. So when Vanderpump Rules first started, however many years, okay, I'm 48 years old. I have no business being involved. You in have these- every business. <laughs> Jax is 65. Okay. Thomas Ravenel is 89 million. <laughs> We're all good. I, what I'm saying is it's slightly embarrassing that I was so immediately interested in this show and I was very, very into Jackson Stassi at the beginning. Everybody As was. You're a human are. who lives in Britain. We can magic. all remember first season Jackson, how hot he was. And now he's not. So... <laughs> Um, anyway, um, I, that first season, you know, followed him all on Twitter and whatever. And then I kind of noticed it was really odd. And again, not a mill and all this Twitter stuff is weird that she was always saying all this mean stuff about Saucy. And I was like, what's that about? She's kind of a hoe or whatever. I couldn't quite, I couldn't quite get it. I couldn't quite get it. So I think I tweeted at her and then she you tweeted at Sheena. Sheena. And said, why are you so mean to Stassi? She literally says nothing bad to you. Lucky you reached out and reached through the screen to just go right to the source. I'm a mom. I'm just going to talk to my friends and ask them what's up. I'm a mom. I'm a mom. I want it all to be fine. And so then her mother starts like aggressively tweeting me. What? Yes. This is not even the story. Why did her mom get in? She's like, you're a mom. I'm a fucking mom. No, I never even said my mom her mom just started aggressively tweeting me like you don't know and I was like oh okay so sorry I was trying to I, I was trying to dip my toe You're in trying Twitter to do what anyone would do tweet and try to mediate between reality yes. stars so right after that Stassi sent me a tweet back and says you always have my back girl something something and I was like yeah so she <laughs> meanwhile you always have my back that one time yeah, meanwhile I'm you always age of have my mother. back stranger I don't even know if you're an egg I had a picture. Okay. So she follows me back on Twitter. Now here's the story. Now's the story. Now's the story. Since that time, she and I, uh, whatever you call it in the Twitter where you do the direct messaging. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I DM, whatever. And she literally, like recently, Sheena posted something on Twitter about, who can help my sister find a fake ID? And I screenshot that and sent that to Stassi and she wrote, she sent me a screenshot of her and Katie and Kristen's text that said, Sheena's a fucking moron. I cannot believe that. Wait, that's still not the story. (laughs) Sorry, so sorry. Okay, get ready. So last year, this time last year, I was going to New York City and I was going to meet up with uh, Taylor Strucker who has to wake up with Taylor. And I just sent Stassi a DM, because, you know, now we're pals. And, okay. And I said, oh, I'm going to be in New York, and I'm going to meet up with your friend Taylor Strucker, and it's so fun. I've met her before, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, any chance you could get me tickets to watch What Happens Live? I know that's stupid or presumptuous, or I don't know what kind of pull you have. Uh, she got me the tickets. Wow. I got to tell you, that's not the story. Everything you told us before was the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I want to give you a it tote bag. a three. And it she's like, doing it again this year. Wow. That was wonderful. This was more dramatic and had more parts than Star Wars. <laughs> You're very sweet. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that. Wow. Wow. I loved those. Me too. They were great in person, even better hearing them again. Now, now, speaking of Kelly Ben Simone. Yeah, I've always said that some of your finest acting work has been you doing Kelly Ben Simone and her Scary Island tirade monologue. It's some. It's the best piece of 
women's monologue that I've seen in a long time. It should be in one of those monologue books, like monologues you haven't heard. Yeah. yeah. I love it so much. And I would, can you do me a favor and can you perform it right now? Do you think you could <laughs> do that for me? Okay. I mean, I can you set the scene? <laughs> no, can we I, set the scene? I haven't memorized this. Well, this this is a scene that we called ourselves "Sun, Sand, and Psychosis," mm-hmm. which is Kelly Ben Simone's rambling insanity on Scary Island. Mm-hmm. And so much went on, and so people interject, but we preferred to just cut out everyone else and just put it all into a monologue. Yeah, it deserves to be seen to stand out from the stand on its own mm-hmm. two feet. Mm-hmm. Here it is. This is when Kelly comes out at dinner and addresses the group. You guys are so high maintenance. It's like, I really, no, no, no. I really don't want to sit across from Bethany because I think I might be attacked. Like, why does she always want to attack me all the time? You know, I threw up the night before I came here thinking Bethany was going to freaking attack me because she's tried to kill me so many times before. No, this is white noise. This is all like white noise. Ramona, white white noise. Can you just zip it? Please, guys, zip it because I'm like an encyclopedia. It's time. Oh my God, it's a witch hunt. <laughs> you guys are like a witch hunt. It's like freaking Hades in here. Oh, oh, and what about when you attacked Gwyneth, my friend Gwyneth Paltrow? Oh my God, Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton, put your hair up. It's Al Sharpton. You know what? It's been a really lovely evening and I've had a really lovely time, but I'm going to excuse myself like an adult and I'm going to come back and I'll do shots. I am a woman and I have a prerogative. You think I don't listen? I listen. I just don't like the chatter. I don't. And in my defense, that's what makes people crazy about me. Does anyone want a jelly bean or a lollipop? (laughs) What is this? 1979, free to be you and me. Good things for everyone. Thank you so much. Wow, Casey. I loved it. Beautiful. It has so many twists and turns as an actor. It does, but you conquer them all. (laughs) You ride them smoothly in a way that. (laughs) A lot of transitions to make. I know, but I'm on the ride with you. Thank you. I really am. It's, It's some of the best work I've ever seen you do. And I say that. I love it. Do you think I could be nominated for something with that? I would Maybe love it. Maybe a podcast, Stitcher a podcast, premium a, a bonus castie? content? A castie? Or? <laughs> now, we have another scene, Danielle. Yeah. Here, that we'd like to call in our friend April Mouton to read with us. Yes. Now, this is a scene that I don't think gets acknowledged in the Housewives canon as much as I'd really like it to. No, it's a much smaller slice of life scene. But I remember it really tearing at my heartstrings and making me love it. And this is a scene between... Aviva and Sonia and Ramona when um, Sonia's dog was sick and she didn't go to to Aviva's, I guess, cycle cycle charity. This charity is for kids that, you know, don't have limbs or have gone through sort of things because Aviva obviously sympathizes and is there with them because of her accident, because of, of what has happened to her. So that's just setting the stage for everybody. And yes. So here we go. Uh, Aviva will be played by April. Um, I, Danielle, will be playing Ramona. And I, Casey, will be playing Sonia. Mm -hmm. I know your dog had to go to the vet, and Ramona, you had a doctor's appointment, but I really wish you guys could have come to my charity event. I needed to go to the vet. It's humiliating to be a very proud dog wearing diapers. Ramona, I think in all honesty, you should have scheduled your dermatologist appointment for another day. Oh, wait. Do you know how hard it is to get a dermatologist appointment in New York? But you're right. You're right. And Sonia... I think you should have had a had somebody else take your dog to the vet. Excuse me now. That's her baby. That's her child. That's her child. You know, now this is out of control. Okay, no one is taking Milo to the vet when I may be possibly putting him down, okay? Let's cool it. I'm really sorry I didn't go to your charity, okay? Okay, I'm really sorry. I'm really very supportive of you and your charity. You know, it wasn't about my charity. Hold on, it's, it wasn't about my charity. No one else is taking my dog to the vet. It wasn't about me or my charity. It was about the children who are missing legs this wasn't about me it was about milo okay it was it was not about me you both have very valid points you both have valid points did i not share my side that it was not about me it was about milo and i and i heard your side too 
Okay, let's make a toast. You both have valid points. Excuses are like assholes. Everybody has them. I'm over it. I'm over it. Obviously, you don't feel my pain if you don't think I should have gone to the doctor with my dog. She doesn't know. She doesn't have a dog. I love dogs. And I understand the dogs are like children. I get it. I understood your pain and I felt that obviously you did not understand my pain. I'm sorry. I do feel your pain. Unless you have a dog, you don't know. I have children. Unless you have a dog, you don't know. You're upsetting her. Don't get upset. I'm sorry. The medicine is going to work. The medicine is going to work. Let's all think positive. It may live until 19. Lesson learned. You're not a dog person. End scene. Wow. Beautiful. That is, I mean, and it's true. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Aviva was not a dog person. Or a person person. (laughs) Yeah. She really wasn't. So, you know, we all It's nice to hear Aviva again. Yeah, we sort of missed her. Missed her voice. Now, here's a little something. Um, We had a listener talk to us last year on our old Facebook group, RIP, a woman named Zibby, whose mother-in-law from Boston is a huge Housewives fan and has many opinions. We haven't heard for a while because we haven't been on the Facebook group group, but she did send us a personal message over Facebook and her mother-in-law has lots of opinions again and has some boots on the ground and she wanted to share them. So it's a little bit, I'm going to try and share it all in her Boston accent, as I know I try and I always sound insane, but we'll try. Okay. I got to get into it for Andrew as best as I can't remember. Maybe she thinks she's giving this to Andy Cohen. I'm not sure. (laughs) She's going to be you are very not. disappointed. She's going to be very disappointed. So I'm standing in line at a wake <laughs> with a pinched nerve in my neck that's acting up. I've been one hour so far and the line is moving very slowly. All the while standing in front of me is this woman and man, I am with my friend. None of us has spoken a word to each other. I'm thinking that I'll never make it as my neck is killing me. So I said out loud, God, I could use a glass of wine right now. The woman turns around and says, what kind of wine do you drink? White Zinfandel? I said, that's a seasonal wine, but I love them all. And she says, a friend of mine, a friend of mine has a white Zinfandel wine. Oh, really? I says, What's the brand? She says, did you ever see the Real Housewives of New York on Bravo? I watched them all and I have all of their beginnings uh, and, and have from all their beginnings a dirty little secret I have. She just says, well, I just got back from a state visiting Sonia Morgan's mother. I used to babysit for Sonia and her sisters and brother. Now, Andrew, <laughs> before I go any further, this girl went to the same high school as I went to, she was in my brother Michael's class, two years behind me. There were five kids in her family, and I remembered her older sister, who we talked about. Her maiden name is, is, it doesn't matter. I don't know her married name, but this is how the conversation went. And that's why I think she gave me this following info. I was on the edge of my seat now, and I forgot about my neck. I said, please tell me everything and anything about Sonia. Well, she has two sisters and a brother. I babysat for them since I was a little kid. I visit her mother all the time. They are wonderful. Father never mentioned. As a family. Sonia was the only one who went to private school. Mother didn't have the funds to send the rest of them. Sonia's crowd was far different than the rest of the kids. Then she said, she has a daughter, and she's dropped dead beautiful. I said, can we give me any dirt? She said, I wouldn't feel right doing that. I said, well, I always felt that the reason her husband divorced her was because she got drunk too many times and acted up. (coughs) So acted up so disgustingly that he couldn't take the embarrassment anymore. She was body language, hesitant to answer me and then said they divorced after, get this, his car accident. What was that all about, I thought? She said, taking care of him, I think, got to be too much. Then she immediately changed the subject and said, Sonia, her mother, and a couple of her friends took me to breakfast. They're all loaded. I ended up paying, like always. So typical of that set. They never pay. Now we're in the funeral home, and it's all over for me. Never even caught a glimpse of her on the way out. Oh, the guy Michael is standing with would... Every now and then, nod his head and down, agreeing with everything she told me, but I never, he never added anything to the conversation. Wish I had more. Hope all is well with you. I'm going to grandparents' day at Central tomorrow. Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Love Zib's mother in law. Wow. <laughs> so that's all I know. I just love her as a personality. I don't know that we got. Amazing boots on the ground, but I love her involvement. I love that A, she thinks she's talking to Andy. Yes. 
I think. And <laughs> we'll what... take any of Andy's runoff. Yes, comments. please, please. But I love her. And yes. I think we did get something. Yeah, I do. So this From woman darker, who I guess used to babysit. Darker revelations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we got something. Yeah, we got something. I can't quite put my I love how on. she said, father never mentioned. Father never mentioned. <laughs> just, and sorry about my Boston accent. Guys. No, I think right. your Boston is much better than you get. You give yourself credit for. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Um, so that's a little something that everyone needs to, to know. Guys, Danielle, we have some more questions from listeners. Yes, we sure do. Oh, I'm seeing one. From Giselle Quintana. Okay. I like. Just how does Casey make her hair eternally glossy? What a question. It is eternally it's glossy. It's not, but it I'll is. take it. I'm looking it. at it now. Did you wash it today? No, God, no. Well. You know, I don't, I appreciate this question. I feel, like I said, I've, I'm always looking for a low-level hair ad. I don't know. Is it just natural? I don't think so. You have a thick, full hair, head of hair. Maybe it's like the prenatals and stuff I'm taking, but I don't know. I mean, I used to use Moroccan oil, but now I'm just on Frederick for Kai. They sent us actually some very nice shampoo and conditioner. I'm not just saying that. I've been using it since they sent it, and it's working wonders. Lovely. Um, now, this is a question from John David Duncan. Mm-hmm. What's your best impressions of The Real Housewives? Who's who do you who's your best impression? Meaning that I do? Yeah. Oh God, none. I mean, I'm not good at really any of no, them. No, that's not true. You do a good um, Teresa. Don't you remember Judici? you did the Teresa huh. Judici? Okay. Oh, and your Shan- Shannon. Your Shannon. Sometimes I can channel Shannon. Oh, and then obviously your Landon. I mean, she's not a housewife. Sure, but, but sometimes I'll get on a frequency with Landon. Yeah. Now you is Camille Grammer. My Camille Grammer was. Uh, for some reason, I hit a. Sometimes I can do a two second impression, and I can't go beyond that. But I like I can do a two seconds of Sally Field, and I can do two seconds of Jodie Foster, and I can do two seconds of Camille. No, you can do a lot of Camille. You, you so? really like. It's just about getting the breathiness. Yeah. And the sort of I telling you, it's just she's just pernicious. <laughs> like that. Pernicious can, seems to be a real pernicious. way in. Pernicious. Yeah. That that word and sort of that. That wave I can ride is my way into Camille. Wow. So that's my impression. Now, Julia Rossi asks, who is the man in Casey's profile picture? Now, Danielle, you were there for this night. Mm-hmm. The man in, in my profile picture, I am looking terrified as a man is chasing after me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This man is a stripper. Mm-hmm. And this was at my bachelorette party yep. in Palm Springs when... One night, June, Diane, and I had taken a pot cookie years and years ago, and we were stoned out of our minds, and we were looking at a light show. Don't worry about it. (laughs) And I turned to her out of the blue. I was not dating anyone at the time, and I said to her deadly seriously, I need to marry a businessman. (laughs) This was like seven, eight years before I was even close to getting engaged. You need to marry a businessman. And I was like, had tears in my eyes, like, I need to marry a businessman. And she's like, okay. So she took that to heart, and... For my stripper, she wanted a businessman. Mm -hmm. But when this little gentleman, and I do mean little gentleman, came Mm -hmm. to the door, he He, was in fatigues. He sure was. I remember it. And and he was a businessman, but more for the army. (laughs) His business was protecting our country. Was there a mix up? Because I remember him being in fatigues too. And June (laughs) and and our other dear friend Kulop being very upset by the fact that he showed up in, in fatigue. As June said, harder to come up with fatigues in a way than like a suit. You know, <laughs> so June had to change her little speech because she was going to say, here's a businessman. So she said, as we know, Casey's always loved our troops and supported them. <laughs> Were you so confused at that moment? Well, you know, with a stripper, I don't think you're necessarily thinking it's going to like relate to your personal life. <laughs> so I was fine. And I do support the troops. You do. You sure do. And he certainly wasn't in any of those clothes for long. Yeah. No, not long at all. No. We were all screaming, running like a bear had entered the room and wanted to maul each and every uh-huh. one of us. And so that's what I'm running from. Now, I couldn't run. I could only run so far. He got me. Uh-huh. Then asked for volunteers. And June was eight months pregnant and continued yes. to volunteer herself. Yes, because she knew that she needed to to do that for he, us. He looked at her. He looked at her pregnant stomach and he said no. And it was awkward <laughs> to watch a friend try to get a stripper to strip on them. Who And the stripper <laughs> says no. So then Kulop that was, had to. That it was, was a darker <laughs> moment. Very I'm dark. Recalling. So Kulop really had to take it for the gang and she took it for the gang. Oh, Kulop felt what she described later to be hot breath on her vagina. 
and unwanted. unwanted unwanted and that's what strippers are at most <laughs> bachelorette parties i've been the stripper is unwanted and yet we call for him and it's not yeah. fair to the stripper yeah. he's doing his duty yeah it, his job it, much, much like, like serving much like soldiers yeah. Yeah. they don't want to be there but they know they have to be there to serve the greater good and that's what he was doing so i salute him like i salute our troops yes he was a wonderful man now someone's asking danielle laura mm-hmm. Furman, do you think dorinda and john are next meaning we've seen we've had some blows we've had Luann and tom have fallen away and followed by um i don't think so carolyn oh I think they're, I don't know if they're a forever couple, but I don't think they're going anywhere, anywhere. Both of them have settled, her more than him. But I think they've just decided that companionship is better than nothing at all. And so though they might not be happy with each other, I think they do have decent sex Mm. or good sex, hot, sweaty, hairy sex. And I think that it's good enough. Hmm. So I don't see that going anywhere anytime soon. I think you're right. Um, here is a question for you, Casey. Yeah. Would you have had a reading done by Tyler Henry? Are the new baby and your mom, uh, like to talk about the new baby and your mom, yes. them being sort of close to the hangout sort of in the... I would love to get a reading by Tyler Henry, mm-hmm. please. I mean, as you know, I'll take any charlatan on any street corner and turn over my life to them. Yeah. And I would love it to be a real person. And I do believe Tyler Henry's real. You do believe he's real? <laughs> Someone's asking us, Danielle, mm-hmm. Angela, A-dubs, are you watching Flipping Out, taking on the Queen of Versailles home? I did not know they were doing her house. Did you know that? No, I certainly did not. So Flipping Out just came out, and I do mm-hmm. want to watch uh-huh. Jeff Lewis and Gage are having a baby. I'm, I'm excited about the storyline because mm-hmm. it's real to their lives. <laughs> and we worked with the Queen of Versailles on Hot Wives. We sure did. She was sad. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know any other way to make joy out of a really tough situation. (laughs) She is, she was, she was uh, as Mm. sad as it seems. She came out with a calendar, gave us all a calendar with her posed in really upsetting pictures. I mean, she Um, helped you out. It seems like during the show, I think you'd give her a better review, but. You know, I wanted, I loved that documentary, but I, I can only say what I was there is, she made me sad. I wish good things for her. I wish the best for her. I think she is a woman that was just out of sorts. Mm. Um, and things were too big for her in her life. And, Mm. but I, I don't have anything else to say except for that. Like there's darkness there (laughs) and I couldn't escape it. What a gorgeous review, Danielle. (laughs) Guys, we've come to the end. This was a more of a hodgepodge, a real hodgepodge episode. Uh, Come as you are, come as you will. Come as you are, but we thank you for the boots on the ground. We thank our uh, listeners for sending us these great questions. We thank Zippy's mother-in-law, who always entertains and always has hot tips for us. <laughs> thank you, April Mouton, for filling in in the role of Aviva Drescher. Yes, you were a, a, a wonderful performer. And I thank myself. I thank you. Yeah, I thank all of us. <laughs> and I thank Lyra from Earwolf, who's helping us with yeah. our audio. Guys, thank bye. You. Bye. <laughs> 